continue. This is Mr. Harden coming to you again. Amen from our home church. Amen. The Centennial Holy Land is there about the church. Amen. Thanking God for another beautiful day that he has blessed us with. Amen. I want to let you know that we're still praying for you. Amen. That you continue study God's words and hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. We will ask also, don't forget to continue praying for our members that have lost loved ones. And also, uh, Minister Evelyn, she's in Texas with her father, who have, I believe, have is taken her back to the hospital. And he's pretty sick. And we want to pray to, for him, uh, that God would give him a speedy recovery if it's his will. Amen. So again, we thank God for another wonderful day that he has blessed us with. Now let us bow our heads in prayer. It is time, and if you will, pray with me as we can pray for Minister Evelyn, uh, Father, as he is sick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come standing for your presence. Thank you for another day that you have blessed us with. On day, been coming ever since the beginning of time, but Lord, you seem fit to let us uh, be able to, to go through this day uh, safe from harm and danger. And we thank you right now. We pray a special prayer for, uh, for our member, Mr. Evelyn, who is with our father tonight, is sick in Texas. Bless her, Lord, and give her strength, and bless him, a man of God who's been preaching your word for a long time. If it be your will, Lord, touch him in his mind and his body, and heal him if it be your will. Not only him, a lot of other people are going through today because of this coronavirus. Lord, bless him and take care of him. So many people are not, I mean, listening, not paying attention. But Father, we pray that you touch their heart and their mind, that uh, they would obey and do the right thing. And Father, we thank you right now. Keep us together and, 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 and bless us, Lord, and hold on to us, Lord, that we be able to stand in these evil days. And thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We all want that praise to our Father, which is in heaven, to his Son, Jesus, and to the precious Holy Spirit. And to our pastor, our sister, pastor, and their wives, and to my wife, Nancy Pauline, and to the entire Centennial Church family, and all of our friends. Let me say this grace be unto all of you tonight, and peace from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I said that to say this to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. We have a great, great lesson tonight. We want to come to you. Amen. This uh, one of them, we ask God that he would bless it, and then we hope that uh, you would get something out of it. Amen. Tonight, we in Proverbs, amen, chapter 18, uh, verse 22. And it reads as follows. He who finds a wife, find a good thing, and obtain favor from the Lord. Amen. He who finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtain favor from the Lord. Uh, God, uh, uh, he proves it. He approves it. It's good that you can find that wife. Amen. It's a good thing from God. Amen. This verse tonight, amen. Uh, 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 the writer here, uh, I call him Dr. Solomon. He does not say wives, but he's single or a wife. He has found a good thing and obtained favor of the Lord. That's the way God's approved it. Amen. If we go back to the beginning, amen, when God set up everything in the beginning, uh, when he had made everything and then Adam was standing there and he was all alone, God looked at him and there was nothing comparable for him. And God looked at him and said, man shall not be alone. I will make him a help me. Amen. So God laid Adam down and put him to sleep. And after he put him to sleep, he took a rib from his side. And when he took it from his side, he went and sat down and took his time and he made a woman. Now, I don't know how long it's taking him to do it, but once he finished, he brought her back to Adam and gave her to him. And that was a good thing because everything God has made created was good and not only good but very good and Adam spoke deep words therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother shall cleave unto his wife amen and they shall become one flesh amen we go back then 
Uh, in the beginning, God the one instituted the marriage. Not man. God instituted the marriage. And then he expected Adam and Eve to be his representative of all his creation and what he made. And we know uh, when God picked someone, he know he picked the right people. Can I get a witness here tonight? Amen. So in this verse 22 tonight, the writer of Solomon is saying a wife, not wives. Amen. One wife is the true marriage. And Solomon seemed to uh, come to the conclusion in this verse that one wife is more than enough. I know I can get some witness for that tonight. One wife is more than enough. Amen. So a wife is outlined in the beginning as a helpmeet. Amen. A companion or helper, help someone who is there by her husband. Equally your same mind, thought, and idea. She is there to give him strength and stability to her husband. That's why he is able to leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife, and they will build their own home together, and they will find favor with God, and God will approve it. Amen. Can I get the witness here tonight? Amen. And so, and so, let's go just a little, little deep into the, the lesson tonight. Amen. The question is, who can find her? Who can find her? She does exist. But she's really hard to find. A man is blessed with a good wife. He is as happy as if he were upon a throne. For she is no less than a crown to him. Amen. She's special. Amen. To find a wife of that value that she's just like a crown upon his head. Amen. Can I get the witness here tonight? Amen. So a virtuous woman. Is pious. She's very spiritual minded and, and she is wise. Amen. She's clever and very industrial. She works hard. That is acting for the good of her family. And she looks well to the way of her household. She is a woman of spirit that she can bear crosses. She can bear crosses without disturbing. Such a one on her own husband, hallelujah, heirs her head. Therefore, she is a crown to him. Uh, crown to him, a juror of great value, even a rare juror. Amen. You know when jury is something that do not lose its value. So this woman means that much to him, amen, when he found her, amen, because God has blessed him with her. And she was rare. Amen. Nothing can replace her. Amen. Can I get away with him? He has found that which uh, will not only contribute more than anything to his comfort in this life, but will forward him in the way to heaven. So this wife, she will not, amen, do anything to hinder him while he's serving God. She will make sure that everything is going right in their life. And so she would not cause any problem, even if he was in, in the circular world, if he was in, the, in, in some kind of high position in, in, in his office where he worked, she would not scandalize him or cause anything, amen, to affect him, even in his work. That's the type of woman when you find a good wife, amen. And then here, when we pray and ask God to find a good, a good wife for us, amen, God is to be acknowledged. Amen. He is to be not because it is a token of his favor. In other words, he approves it, approves her. Amen. Why do you say that? Because if you go back to the beginning, God is the one made woman. When he took her to Adam, he approved her that she was worthy. Amen. For him. Can I get a witness here tonight? Amen. And so she support and keep up his authority. Amen. In his family. As a crown is an ensign of power, she is submissive and faithful to him, and by her example teaches his children and others to be so. In other words, what I'm saying, nobody come into uh, her home and then disrespect her husband. Amen. He is the head of that house. 
and not anyone else coming in and saying, you this or you that. She do not delete him. Amen. She lift him up. Amen. To who he really are in that family. Can I get a witness here tonight? Amen. Amen. And so, and so as we move on here, amen, she worked hard, amen, to prepare for her family. She rise early in the morning before dawn, which she would do gladly. Amen. When she get up, she won't be complaining. She look around and she see how wonderful her family is, her children, her husband. She uh, uh, gets up and look at them. And when she is so excited about doing the thing that she uh, would do to help this family progress, amen, she feel good about it. She won't complain at all. Can I get a witness here tonight? Amen. A good woman, she knows how to manage her household. She will take her resources and invest, then uh, reinvest if necessary to help bring wealth to the family. Amen. And, and a man also, his reputation, amen, uh, of his good reputation began with his home and thus the virtues of his wife. Amen. Other word, she can build him up. Also, she can tear him down too. Can I get a witness here tonight? Amen. And so, and so, she, when she opened her mouth, she opened her mouth with wisdom. And on her tongue is the law of kindness. Amen. The woman who fear uh, the Lord give her confidence. Amen. To face the future with this unexpected, unexpected challenger. Amen. When she go through these things and things happen, even like this coronavirus going on right today, this uh, wise woman would know how to manage her household through even going through these tough times today. Amen. She's very skilled in how to manage her home. Amen. So in my closing tonight, in my closing tonight, a good wife will use words of wisdom, not gossip. She is uh, not lazy or afraid of hard work in her home. Her children respect her and honor her. Also, her husband recognizes all the good work that she does. She is not caught up, hallelujah, she is not caught up on her look and things that of vanity, all of her possessions, all the things that she have around her, she's not caught up on that kind of stuff. But her beauty, hallelujah, her beauty come from the inside, not the outside. Her beauty come from the inside, amen, because that spreads out all over, amen, the community, even, amen, to her husband and to her children, amen, the beauty that she have within herself, amen. And that's where it is today with us, Christian and friend. We are, as believers in Christ, amen, we are, Amen. The bride of Christ. And God is looking for us tonight to represent him. Amen. To represent him. That way we can set good example. Amen. For the one, the young people that are following us. That they will may see what we are doing and follow our path. And that will make this world a better place to live. Amen. I'm so glad tonight that we're able to bring this to you tonight. Amen. Solomon. Amen. Wrote this one. I know that what he was writing is true. Amen. So we're so thankful tonight that uh, we're able to give this word to you. And we hope that you will enjoy it and hope you get some from it. Let us, amen, be thankful for what God has done for us. Amen. God bless you. And may he keep you. May his peace shine upon you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Happy Thursday, Sunday to my Centennial Holy Land Church family and to anyone who's watching. Thank you guys for joining us for another Bible class. I pray that you guys get something from the study of this lesson, as well as be able to take away something from this lesson to be able to apply it to your lives. Amen. Amen. Also, I want to acknowledge my pastor, assistant pastor and their wives, to my Bible class instructor and to his wife to the ministers, deacons, trustees, mothers, and everyone else in their respective places, I come to tell you on today that I am truly grateful, amen. Amen, I know that we're still going through the pandemic and it looks like the cases are actually increasing, but guess what, God is still able and I choose to be grateful on today. God gave me life, he gave me breath in my body 
and I thank him for it. Amen. He's given me another chance to get it right. So I am truly grateful. Amen. Also, at this time, I want to say happy belated birthday to Minister Harden, our Bible class instructor. And I just want to say on behalf of the entire Bible class, we want to thank you for your diligence. We want to thank you for your commitment. And we want to thank you for your hard work in teaching Bible class. Amen. I know it's not easy. I know you make it seem effortless, but we thank you just for being committed to the work that God has called you to do. Amen. I want to say I love you. I appreciate you and keep doing the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Super excited about the study of this lesson on today. And I think it's applicable for those who are unmarried, but also for those who are married. Amen. Amen. So let's continue with the study of verse number 22 in the 18th chapter of the book of Proverbs. Amen. Amen. If we could use for a subject just for a moment, use your favor wisely. Amen. Use your favor wisely. Amen. Let's go ahead and read verse number 22. Verse number 22, it reads as such. It says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. So what Solomon is telling his son in this particular passage of scripture, seek a wife. Amen. Amen. Let me address the man right now for a moment. In this particular passage of scripture, we see that Solomon doesn't say, he who findeth a girlfriend. He doesn't say, he who findeth a side piece. He doesn't say he who findeth a boo. He doesn't say he who findeth somebody else's wife. He said he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Amen. Amen. So we have to understand that marriage is good in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. And then it also says and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now let's um, define favor. Amen. Favor is gaining approval acceptance or special benefits or blessings and we have to understand that favor is extended to those who live holy and righteous lives amen so you can't live in sin and have favor let me say that again you cannot live in sin and have favor amen favor is extended to those who live according to the will of god amen Amen. And we have to understand that there's special blessings, there's special benefits that come along with marriage. And you have to live holy. Amen. And you have to live righteous. Amen. In order to receive those benefits. Amen. And I just want to encourage the men that are out there. Amen. Find and seek a wife. Amen. But seek God for your wife. Amen. Don't do it on your own. Amen. Because you can find, you can find a wife. And if she ain't the right one, it could be a bad thing. Amen. Amen. And also, I want to say, even in re relationship to that, if you're in a relationship and you discover that she's not your wife, leave her alone. Let me say that again. If you're in a relationship and you discover she's not your wife, leave her alone. Don't waste your time. Amen. You don't have time to waste. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to address the women. So as I was reading this particular passage of scripture, one of the phrases that really um, jumped out at me was, and obtain a favor of the Lord. Amen. So oftentimes I think sometimes people think, oh, so when you get married, you get favor. But no, he's calling the wife favored before she gets married. Amen. There are several women even in the Bible that were mentioned as favored. Amen. We look at Mary, we look at the life of Elizabeth, we look at Rachel, we look at Esther. Those were all favored women of the Lord. Amen. But guess what? They lived holy and righteous lives. And so if we want the favor of the Lord over our lives, we have to live holy, righteous lives as well. Amen. Amen. And also I want to address what the world says. Amen. About favors, not favor, favors. Amen. See, the world teaches you, you have to do favors outside of the context of marriage in order to get married. Amen. Amen. But we understand that that's not true. And that's contrary to what the word of God is saying. He didn't say in this particular passage of scripture, you have to do favors, but that you are favored. Amen. And see, when you understand your identity and you understand that your identity is rooted in Christ, amen, and you understand your value, 
You understand that you are the prize. You understand that you are priceless. When you understand that you are precious, you won't give out favors because you understand that you are favored and you're favored by the most high God. Amen. Let me say that again. You are favored by the most high God. So guess what? You don't have to do favors. We don't cut corners when we're doing things holy and we're doing things righteous. Amen. We do things according to the will of God. Amen. And I want to encourage those, even if you find yourselves even in a state where you have compromised and you have done favors, amen. God is a God of restoration, amen. And he can make you new, amen. But you have to be committed to living holy. You have to be committed to living righteousness, excuse me, to live righteous, amen. And guess what? God will keep those who want to be kept, but you have to be committed, amen. You have to be committed to doing the will of God, amen. So I want to encourage women, you don't have to compromise your integrity. You don't have to compromise your character to get a man and to get a husband. Amen. You don't have to do favors. Amen. This is what, what the scripture says. He says, he who findeth the wife findeth the good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Amen. That means that the woman is favored. Amen. If she's living holy and living righteous. Amen. So if you live holy and if you live righteous, you don't have to compromise by doing favors because you are favored, amen, and you're favored by God, amen. And also, I want to kind of touch on your value. See, we are co-heirs with Christ, amen. We are already seated in heavenly places with Christ, amen. So we have to understand our value, amen. And when you understand your value, you're not going to give away favors because you understand that that's not the value, amen. That's cheap, amen. Would I pay a million dollars for a McDonald's hamburger? Of course not, because that's not an even exchange, amen? So God is saying this so that we don't give away ourselves cheaply, amen? Let me just say it like this. So we don't give away ourselves in a cheap fashion, amen? You are valuable, amen? I just said it. You are priceless. You are precious, and you are amazing in the sight of God, amen? And you have to understand that you are the prize and you are the favor. Amen. But you have to live holy. You have to live righteous and you have to live according to the will of God. So use your favor wisely. Amen. And wait till God's appointed time. Amen. Then you can have all the favors you want. Amen. But you can't do that outside of the will of God. Amen. Because see, when we do things outside of the will of God, it causes pain and it causes suffering. Amen. And things that we wouldn't have to go through, we go through because of our disobedience. Amen. So I just want to encourage those, even those women as well as men, that are waiting on God to send them their soulmate. Amen. Trust and believe in God's appointed time. Don't rush. Be faithful to God because your faithfulness to God is going to teach you how to be faithful to your mate. Amen. Because if you're not faithful to God, hmm, how can you be faithful to your mate? Amen. And also put your faith and trust in God. Know that God will allow you to meet at his appointed time. Amen. If you can trust God with your soul, you can certainly trust God with your soul mate. Amen. Let me say that again. If you can trust God with your soul, you can trust God with your soul mate. Amen. And the scripture says no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright. Amen. So let's continue to walk upright. Let's continue to use our favor wisely. We don't have to compromise by doing what the world does. Amen. We can live a holy and righteous life and we can still have fun. Let me tell you something. You can still have fun and live holy. Amen. So don't believe what the world says. Amen. You can still have fun and live holy. Amen. And have a big smile on your face like this. <laughs> Amen. And so I just want to encourage those who are waiting and even those who are married, continue to be faithful to your spouse, amen, and continue to be faithful to God, amen, and that God will allow, I just pray that God will allow your marriages to be successful and to be examples to those who are unmarried, amen, on an example of a successful marriage, amen, amen. So remember, use your favor wisely, amen. You don't have to do favors because you are favored and you're favored by the most high God. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I just thank you for being God. You are supreme. You reign. And there is no other God besides you, O oh God. 
Father, we thank you for the study of this lesson. We understand that regardless of what happens, we are favored in your sight if we live holy and if we live righteous, oh God. Father, we thank you that our identity is rooted in your son, Christ Jesus, oh God. And Father, we thank you that we don't have to compromise our values. We don't have to compromise our integrity. We don't have to compromise our character just for a favor and just to get married, but we can depend on you, oh God. Father, I thank you even for the study of this lesson. I pray that we just continue to have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. And I thank you that you're not going to allow us to be desperate for relationships, but you will allow us to be faithful first and foremost to you. These things I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and thank God.